Today, I am very excited to be speaking with Congresswoman Garcia, who represents Texas's 29th Congressional District. Representative Garcia serves on the Judiciary Committee and Financial Services Committee. Welcome, Representative Garcia. Thank you for speaking with me today. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm glad, glad you're involved. <laughs> so with that, I'll get right into the first question. So the Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in STEM and computer science. So why do you think students should participate in the challenge? Well, number one, it's a great opportunity to explore any, any of your dreams or ideas that you've had about what technology can do, what innovation can do, and, and, and what we can do uh, to, to uh, better, better our, our lives and, and that of those across the country, our, 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 our fellow uh, residents and citizens. So I think it's a great opportunity to, to just explore and, and to make sure that, that uh, uh, we use uh, the best talent that we have uh, among our young people because you know, when you look at a lot of the early inventors or even, even now when you look at the high tech world, it's a lot of young uh, uh, entrepreneurs that are really getting a lot of innovation, a lot of ideas on the table that are helping so much and making life so much easier and quicker that nowadays with, with a click, you can do so much. So it's really about making sure that we, we put that talent, uh, you know, there's already a lot of students that are, are doing coding and they're already involved, but we want them to kind of harness those resources and, and, and uh, uh, try to see if they can do something that will better uh, humankind. So the App Challenge is a bipartisan initiative with support from both Republicans and Democrats. Why do you think members, regardless of their political affiliation, should host App Challenges within their districts? Well, because innovation, technology, you know, dreams, concepts, you know, all of that is not red or blue and it's not Republican or Democrat. It's about all of us together. And uh, so I think it's important that a, a, an activity like this that supports young people, that supports innovation, that, that supports the growth of America and America's economy is good to have solid uh, uh, bipartisan support. And this program does. Uh, so I think it's exciting uh, because they can really bring the best uh, among our young people from throughout America. And we have students of all coding abilities participating in the challenge. What advice do you have for students who are interested in the challenge? Well, number one, thank you for your interest because that's the first step uh, in that you're already coding, whether it's at the beginning level or, or at a higher tech level, that is just great. So just keep going. Uh, uh, you know, I always challenge students to just close their eyes and, and think and dream and whatever it is that you can try to, you know, you could probably find an app or a way of, of making what you're doing about quicker and faster, more convenient, more accessible. Uh, so I think it's important for, for us to continue to do that. I know that, that last year, um, the group that, that worked from our district tried to find an app to, to, to tell people more about COVID. Uh, you, know, see, you see all kinds of apps out there now, and some of them are simple. Uh, and some of, their, some of them are really important. I know a group of, um, uh, of people, not in my neighborhood, but, but in the neighborhood next to us, when people couldn't find uh, where to go get tested because it was early on and there was no um, um, one website that you could go to, somebody would have to go to every website of every medical system. Uh, this guy apparently was, you know, an, an engineer who was working from home and, you know, he said, well, you know, this, this, this doesn't work. So he put together just like a little app uh, to kind of gather all that information that more people started using his app. Just, it, I mean, it just went viral because everybody got tired of going through five or six or seven or eight or 10 different sources to find an uh, open appointment. Uh, but if you went to his, he would tell you, you know, you know, whether or not there was something available and where, and then with a little map kind of like tied to Google Maps that could tell you how to get there. I mean, that's innovation. It's, it's best when you're doing it for a way to make something accessible, something like the, the, uh, the, the, the testing and, and uh, make it easier and, and more affordable for people. Because you, you didn't have to waste your time. You didn't have to waste your gasoline going to a place and finding out that, well, guess what? There was no shots, I mean, no uh, tests there available. So, you know, there's a way to, to uh, 
to innovate in a very, very positive way for the public good. And, and I think that's why members of Congress support it and it's across the aisle. That's great. Now you've been hosting the App Challenge since 2019. What is your favorite memory of interacting with the students who take part in the challenge? Well, first of all, I was just learning a little bit about it myself because, you know, I've never seen myself as being very high tech and I need a lot of help with a, well, still a lot of things. And I still rely a lot, even for my nieces and nephews on, on some of the apps that I remember going to uh, New York and I was having trouble with, uh, with a, a, a ticket for, um, for a musical. Uh, and they do not give you tickets. And I was like, no, I don't want to leave Houston without knowing I have a ticket. So then my nephew said, but Aunt Chibi, you can do it because if you, you go through the wallet and you put it in there and I said, well, I don't know anything about that. Well, I handed him my phone and within 10 minutes, he had my ticket, he had it in this wallet, he told me how to do it and I felt a lot better. So I think that's the kind of thing that, that's so important. And, and, and again, the, the memory I have uh, that's just, again, I have no, I told the story, but you know, the app that the team put together last time to, to, to tell people about COVID is so important. And frankly, I hope that, that, that now they put one together about why the shot is so important, uh, because that's the next step that we're having challenges with. And we need an app like that in, you know, in English and in Spanish and where you can, where you can go get that shot. Uh, so I may have to circle back with them real soon and tell the staff to talk to them about, we need, we need the new updated app. We need the, uh, the, the COVID uh, point two. Uh, to make sure that we can get the word out to everybody. And, and that's when it really feels good is when you're doing something that's for the public good, something where you're helping others and make it, like I said, either accessible or easier. And why do you think early intervention in STEM and computer science is so important? Well, because kids need to know they have options. They need to know they have options. And if we don't talk to them about STEM, we, we don't talk to them about math and science, if we don't talk to them about uh, 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 high tech or, or any technology opportunity, then they won't know about it. And, you know, I grew up poor in South Texas where I had very little access to much of anything, quite frankly. I usually relied on my sister who was a teacher who would get information from the counselor at her school to give me information. Kids shouldn't have to go through that. They should be able to have, uh, you know, someone uh, guide them and give them all the options. Because I think we have a lot of untapped resources out there because so many of our schools just seem to kind of track you into, well, these kids are doing good. They're going to be going to college. These may not be doing good. They're going to need to go to a trade school. And that's about it. They never really talk about, you know, STEM and research and science. Uh, I know we're trying to do a lot better job here in the Houston area with specialized schools and, and, and those STEM uh, 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 courses, and, and we've changed things a little bit, but everybody needs to do it uh, because it's, it's a way for people to be more creative. And, uh, and I think that it, it, we're, we're, we're making a lot of progress in, in that area, but we need to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. Now, the switch to online learning this past year revealed significant learning equity gaps across the nation. How do you think Congress should address these educational disparities? Well, you know, I've been a real proponent and I will talk to, I'm meeting with my school superintendent. It's a, a new person in, in here in Houston. And uh, we've, we've got to put more emphasis on making sure that, that students have all the options. We've got to make sure that whatever it is, uh, that it's available to all students in all schools. You know, they, for example, here they have a lot of specialized schools like the high school for the DeBakey School and that's over at the medical center and it's meant for people who are interested in, uh, um, in medicine. Then we have a high school for visual and performing arts, that's a fine arts school. And then the high school for uh, law professions. Well, we need to make sure that, that we have a, an emphasis, not just at those schools, and then the others just are on their own. We have to make sure that the curriculum is available and the opportunities are available to every child in every zip code, no matter, no matter who they are, where they live, uh, because we're finding that that's not the case. Uh, and the disparities are there, they're real. Uh, and you add to that the disparities on who gets a counselor in the school and who doesn't. 
Mm -hmm. uh, when I checked a couple of, of uh, uh, when I was a state senator, I had a big fight with our superintendents because, you know, when you looked at the Latino schools, we more often than not did not have a counselor or a librarian. Which makes no sense, right? I saw your eyes. That's shocking, right? Yeah. But it was more, more my, my schools didn't have that than some schools across the way that are, that are richer schools. So that's just wrong. We got to make sure that, that uh, uh, in fact, I had a bill on that to make sure that schools had a nurse, a librarian, and, and a counselor. But, but they don't want to be mandated to do that. They want to be able to to have flexibility and what does that result in that we don't get it. So mm -hmm. those are things that we still need to continue to work on to make sure that every, every high school, every, every middle school, because the intervention needs to start early, uh, but we need to start offering these programs at middle school so that we can expose the kids uh, to everything uh, and all the opportunities that they have and let them choose what they want to do and pursue. Don't funnel them in one direction. Yeah. Now, is there a piece of technology that you can't live without? Well, you know, I always used to tease my uh, nieces and nephews that why do you always have your cell phone? It's like, it's like, is that your third ear or, or what? And now I can't live without my Apple watch uh, <laughs> because, you know, ever since I got it, I, I mean, it's like, it's almost like a dream for me to be able to have what we used to call, and you probably don't know the, the, the cartoon character, but there was a a comic strip character called uh, Dick Tracy. And Dick Tracy had a watch that he could talk into. And when I first got my Apple watch, I said, you know, I finally have a Dick Tracy watch. And everybody laughed and said, who's Dick Tracy? Well, those of us of my age know who Dick Tracy is. And this is like a Dick Tracy watch because we can talk into it. I can check my heart rate. I can check my pulse. I can get my text. You know, it does everything. And it's right here in your hand. And, and for me, it's important because particularly like when I'm doing a hearing, I can just kind of glance down and look and return it text real quickly, but I don't really visually pick up the phone and do this. And then somebody was looking and go like, well, the congresswoman's not listening. She's on the phone. But with a watch, you kind of can kind of glance at it real quick and not be as visible. Uh, and because you can, you can do almost everything off of your Apple Watch now, including all that medical stuff, and it's important. It could save a life. And lastly, what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? Well, I, to me, it's still a, uh, my Apple Watch because when I first got it, you it was more like an extension phone. You had to be so many feet from your cell phone to be able to get the connectivity. Uh, and it was really like a, a, a phone extension. And this is like, I forget, I think I'm um, version four. The next year, you didn't have to be close. It was just like being able to talk on the phone. And that was exciting that we could talk on the phone. And then the last one, they had the, uh, they added all the features with the um, checking your pulse and checking a couple of other things and, and uh, being able to open emails. I mean, I could open emails. Uh, and, and so every year, they add more to it that um, I think it's exciting. I think pretty soon we'll be able to do just about everything with our, with our watches. <laughs> our, well, our, our cell phones are the same. Yeah. I mean, I just got the latest uh, Apple version and the zoom lens on this thing is, I mean, the pictures are like really great, <laughs> but I still like taking my own pictures with the camera. I'm a, I'm a camera bug. So I think it's just exciting just to see what they come up with next. Uh, that, that I can personally use. Well, Congresswoman, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. Absolutely. And for and our viewers. You, well, and thank uh, you for your interest. And I think it's, you know, just talking with you and people seeing that you're doing it, I think should encourage others. So thank you for being the role model that you are and keep encouraging uh, your friends and, and, and other students that you know, because these programs are important. It gives people a chance to, uh, um, to be in a, you know, sort of a, a contest and, and meet other people and, and be a part of, of what's going on. Thank you. And the app challenge. So for the app challenge, students can register and submit their apps between now and November 1st. So let's sign up. 